Uh, today on Free Field Training, we're going to be talking about riot batons, different types and varieties of riot batons from the very smallest to the very largest and scariest of them, and different things that different riot batons give you, some of the advantages and disadvantages of different types of riot batons, some of the things you can do with different riot batons, some of the things you can't or shouldn't do with different riot batons, and some stuff you probably wouldn't have thought of on your own when you're just at the store looking at these different varieties of riot batons, not knowing exactly how each of them are used. A lot of them have features that people wouldn't even think about unless they were pointed out to them, and then once you see them, you're like, oh, that's obvious, why wouldn't I have ever noticed that before. One of the things that people don't realize with riot batons is that the majority of what the riot baton is doing is a, a psychological advantage. It's the fact that that guy over there has that really big stick, we're just going to stay away from him, or he's swinging that really big stick around, we're going to stay away from that guy. And, and for that, almost all of these will do that job, although there's one exception up here that we'll talk about shortly. Also, with us tonight is the Instagram live stream audience. If you want to be part of the conversation with us over on Instagram, make sure to check me out on Instagram, Tommy underscore free field training. You could have been watching this video live instead of waiting to see it on YouTube, Tommy underscore free field training. And they're going to have some comments. We're probably going to take those at the end. Whether or not I check them out at the end of the video is going to depend on how good those comments and questions are. So your most basic riot batons are going to be these two here. They're just a large either ash or oaken baton. Uh, the diameters can vary slightly. This is a, a much thinner baton compared to this. I'll give you guys a good look at the size difference here. They're about the same length, but they're designed for very different purposes. This one over here is designed to hold people back, for it to be held out in front of you in order to hold the crowd back. This one here, this thicker baton, is designed for swinging and striking at people. The way you can tell the difference between these two types of batons and their primary purpose and function is the way that they're built. This larger, thicker baton, it's not the fact that it's larger and thicker that makes it better for swinging, it's the fact that the grip is only on one end, and it has a leather thong on it. The leather thong is used by wrapping it around your thumb, your hand around it, and then it helps attach you onto the baton. And even if somebody tries to grab the baton instead of being able to drag you into the crowd, you can let go and it lets it go. I've got a whole video on that. I'll put a little card up there or down in the description. There's a lot of techniques to using these striking riot batons effectively and making sure you don't get hurt while you're doing it. This is one of them. So when you see a baton that's got just a grip on one side, especially one that's designed just for lateral motion, just to keep something from being twisted out of your hand and to, to keep that twisting force from twisting the baton away from you, and it also has a leather thong on it, that's a striking baton. This baton has grips on both ends. See the, the grips that are cut into both ends, they're just circles, they're rings around the baton. These are designed to make it harder to pull the baton out of your hand should you lose one of the grips. You lose one of the grips and somebody tries to pull and it gives you good traction on the baton, but if you want to, you can let go. Same effect as the leather thong on this one. These are pr primarily designed to be able to take and shove back a group of people. One strong person putting their knees and their back and their, a good lean into it, get close to someone and bench press off two or three people in front of them. And the ends of these kind of hurt when you're bench pressing people off, so people tend to move back. If not, they can just get shoved back. This can also be used as a jabbing weapon, of course, so could this if you wanted to, but there's a baton that's designed specifically for that purpose. This is a baton that's designed to be used both for pushing people back, but you can see since it's a little shorter than the other one, its primary purpose is to jab and push people back. For that, it has these, these metal balls on the end. 
A lot of people think that these metal balls are for things like breaking windows and stuff. That's why you'd have a metal ball on the end. The metal ball is on there so that you can more effectively point the effort of jabbing this baton forward. The idea is if you have people coming at you, it's more effective to jab this into the front of the person, push it into a rib, and they actually call these balls on the ends. Back in the day, they called them, what was it, it was rib spreaders. You'd put the, I'm sure they don't actually spread the ribs, but you'd shove it into the person's chest and push backward. And this imparts a lot of pain because you're putting a lot of force in a small area, but because it's rounded, it's designed to not create permanent injury. So that's what that's for. This is another swinging baton, and it's one that I'm not really fond of. This is a riot baton that is designed to be carried regularly on patrol. I, I really have never seen the point in it. Maybe it's just that I'm so short, this, this would like drag on the ground behind me. If you were a really big guy, I could see the, the point of something like this. It's designed for swinging. You've again got those flutes cut into the grip of the baton, and you've got this rubber stopper on it that allows you to slide it onto your belt using a metal ring. So you take the metal ring on your belt, and you take the baton, you slide it on there. You've probably seen that in movies with side handle batons. Well, with the straight stick baton, they often have these little rubber grommets. They don't always work perfectly like this. Sometimes they're just a big rubber grommet, look kind of like a hilt on a sword. That's what these are for. And of course, between these, you're gonna have different amalgamations, different things. You're, you might have something like this that's got grips on both sides that also have a hole through it for putting a thong through because whoever bought them said, well, we're gonna drill a hole and put a thong in it so that we, we can also use them as a swinging baton, that type of thing. Those are the, the big major types. Then there's ones people don't often think about and then there's some stuff that's, that's on the market that I've never actually seen really used in real life but I've, I've gotten, I've collected over the years companies have sent me. Uh, one of them is this. It's more of a, a Chicago-esque style of baton. Some might call it a billy club. And the idea for guys that carry these is that although they don't, it would look like it would fit in a baton holder for like extendable batons. They don't because it's significantly thicker than the grips of extendable batons. The idea behind this is to be able to just shove it in a, a cargo pocket or a pants pocket and pull it out and it's a small handy baton that you can swing. So even if you're in a crowd of people, if you're the second or third line in the riot or you're supervising a line of officers and somebody gets through, you don't have to worry about striking somebody else with the baton while swinging this. I've never used it for such a thing, but it is on the shelf of fun back here, so I figured it'd be interesting to talk about it. And I do know some guys that have told me about their experiences in uh, mass civil disturbances where they said these were very really effective. Uh, one guy that I know actually carries one of these on duty, says he prefers it, he much prefers it over your ass batons or your Smith & Wesson batons or modded knock batons uh, that most people carry on duty. He says there's no opening and closing. It's uh, pretty heavy in the end. It's effective, it gets the job done. And, uh, and he likes it. He's, he says he doesn't accidentally hit things, people or knock things over. He says one of the few batons that he can use indoors. So I guess there's that. Another one, and this is probably the silliest thing that, uh, that I've seen come out in recent years, but I haven't, I haven't used it. I don't know whether it's bad or good or maybe it has advantages I'm not thinking of, but this is an extendable riot baton. So you can flick it out, but you never would because you, you can't flick it down at your leg because it's so long, it's so long that uh, if I flicked it down toward my leg, it would hit the floor. And in fact, my one of my bosses is like six foot four and I tried to have him properly flick the baton down toward his leg in order to de deploy it and it hit the floor when he did. I had to stand on a chair to flick this down uh, toward my leg and have it properly deployed. But this is Bill, this is a Next Torch, Next 39, 39 inch extendable steel riot baton with a push button closure and it has a glass breaker on the end of it. Uh, it's pretty heavy, it's actually heavier than these other riot batons which isn't super surprising since it's steel and it is also 
Let's see which one of these is largest. This is the largest of the batons and it's a couple inches bigger than it. I have a hard time just keeping this in frame, even in the overhead camera. Like, it's huge. So let me give you some sizes and weights so you can get an idea of what we're looking at here. This one is a solid 39 and a half inches, the extendable riot baton. Uh, our, our black swinging baton, this one is 36 inches, so it's a, a solid three feet long. Our uh, pushback baton here, we're looking at, this one is 35 inches, so it might have originally been 36 inches and cut down by somebody over the years. This swinging baton, the one that I said I prefer, is also 36 inches, it's exactly three feet. Our small jabbing baton is 31 inches. And this little guy, he's a little under a foot long. He's 12 inches. If you compare these in relative size, let's slide those up in camera frame. To extendable batons, this is a 20 inch extendable baton. I'm pretty sure that's from uh, Smith & Wesson or Schrade. And this is a 16 inch baton. So that's, those are two pretty common sizes for batons. This is a normal extendable baton you carry on duty and these are the riot batons. 20 inch baton. Versus a 39 inch baton. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. Of course all of these come at a significant uh, weight disadvantage. So we're gonna get some weights on these right now. Our little guy, our foot long little guy billy club is 8.8 .8 ounces. The jabber is actually fairly heavy for what it is. It's uh, some sort of uh, composite. It's one pound, eight ounces. My oaken swinging baton here is one pound nine ounces. Our pushback baton is 15.2 ounces. Our everyday swinger, man that sounds dirty. Our everyday swinger is 14 ounces. A normal Friction lock, just cheapo friction lock, Smith & Wesson or Schrade baton is 15.3 ounces. So this weighs as much as this. Interesting comparison. And the Big Mama Jammer Next Torch 39 inch <laughs> extendable riot baton is one pound, 6.6 .6 ounces, as much as some guns. Those are different types of riot batons and what they're meant for. As much as I can tell, uh, this one is meant for playing with and maybe intimidating if you get out of the car and sling this out and you know it extends three and a half feet over your head, I guess that could, that could have an effect on some people. Uh, this one is, the rubber is designed so that you can carry it on your belt. You don't have to carry the baton around every day. Anybody that's ever have to shove this in their back between their vest and their back like a Ninja Turtle could you know, appreciate that. This one's designed to hold or push a crowd back. This one's designed to swing, to create a wall of swinging officers. The state, the, around here, the state police uh, mobile field force, the guys that do the riot police for the state police really like these. They like a more open formation. These jabbers and the billy clubs are designed more for a, a municipal police department that's going to go shoulder to shoulder type of situation where they're going to be holding a crowd back or jabbing forward. And there's going to be officers one shoulder right onto the other one instead of having space to swing like the state police prefer. So that's Riot Batons, a, a quick down and dirty of some of the more popular ones that are on the market, some of the newest things that are on the market, something that a lot of people wouldn't think of as a Riot Baton, but I, I think fits into that genre. And now we're going to take some comments and questions from the Instagram live stream audience.
J Aurora 99 says, what are riot batons made of? Are they hollow? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, and one that obviously you'd be watching this video for. So as far as I know, none of these are hollow. I have broken batons before. Some of the cheaper Palmer batons are hollow inside, but normally you can tell because they're pretty light. Uh, this one might be hollow inside, but I doubt it judging by how end heavy it is. Most of these are wood. This one uh, is made by uh, Modenok, and it's a, a, a polymer like a PVC material. You can actually bend it a little bit. I don't know if I'd be able to show it on video, but you can bend this. It's a, it's a polymer baton. And then these balls are molded into the end, so there's probably a rod, a steel rod in here, or an aluminum rod in here, and then you know some sort of ring system inside that allows it to lock into the polymer. This is polymer. Uh, this one is steel. If you made this out of aluminum, it would probably break at some stage because I'm gonna go out and test this. I'm gonna have to hit this off of some stuff, see how it holds up. Uh, but this is the extendable baton, this is steel. You could also theoretically make this out of aluminum the way this little ass baton is. Sort of like personal defense ass baton. This is made out of 440, I think it's 440 aluminum. A40 aluminum, I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, this, the, the cheaper Smith & Wesson or Schrade batons, these are steel. The rest of these are all wood. Uh, and the most common riot batons you're gonna see are gonna be uh, these two types of wood batons. Uh, this is a, a thinner oak, looks like white oak, doesn't doesn't bend too well. Uh, this is a thicker oak, and it, it's, it, it's, not, it's not gonna move at all. Uh, they are not, neither of these are hollow inside as far as I know. This isn't hollow inside, this one is. These are actually collapsing segments. If you've seen any of my videos about uh, police batons, in fact, I'll, I'll put a link up there or down below uh, where I take uh, batons from Modenok, Asp, and Next Torch apart, and you can kind of see the insides of them. Uh, these are hollow inside. The other ones, as far as I know, are not. There are cheap polymer batons, I think I already said, but there are cheap polymer batons that are hollow inside. They're molded as just a shell. Uh, normally, those are fairly light. Some of them get away from that by making a, a polymer shell, and then they weight the tip with some type of metal. I would stay away from those. They do tend to break, so if somebody tells you that's what it is, just, just stay away from that stuff entirely. I wouldn't buy it. Your below average humor asks, in terms of use of force, where is hitting someone with a stick fall? Interestingly enough, recent court cases have put it at, at about a little above tasing someone. Most use of force policies that I've seen have said that you, you can use a baton uh, only against an active aggressor or an active resistor. So it's right in, in that range territory. It's a pretty high level use of force. And you have to be careful when you're, you're using a baton that you're not doing permanent damage to people. There's places that you can target and places you can't target. You should be taking a class before using these. This isn't something that you should just go buy a riot baton and, and start just going and using it on the street or in your, in your gig at work. Three River Champ says, is there a lot of flex in the steel baton when using to push a crowd back? That's a good question. Like I said, I, I, haven't, I haven't used this on the street. One of the advantages of these is that when you've got the newer push button steel batons like this one, they don't require uh, excess lubrication, so you're not getting oil on your hands holding crowd back with this. I don't know if that's the first thing I would use with it. I know that uh, intellectually I know that this is not going to collapse, but... My lizard brain tells me that this is going to collapse and it's going to pinch my hands. So I don't think I would spend very much time shoving a crowd back with the collapsible steel riot baton. Uh, I don't think it would bend or break. There's a little bit of motion in it, but no more than you get in any other push button baton. I don't, I don't think you'd be able to put enough force down the middle of this to get it to break, but it is longer, which would allow more leverage to create that force. It's an interesting question. I don't think that would be a problem, but I wouldn't bet my left hand on it until I saw some testing. Maybe we'll do some testing. Mike Diaz says, Hi, hey Tommy, what's up? How much does your new ass baton weigh? This, this little guy, this little aluminum guy, he weighs, let me tear it out here. A little aluminum guy weighs 6.9 ounces. 
light little guy. Uh, Abel 501st VF says, have you seen the new Safe Life Defense soft rifle plate? What are your uh, opinions on it? Uh, it's not a soft rifle plate. It's a flexible rifle plate. And I'm not supposed to talk about it until the official release date, but there might be one of them. Real Anthony Ruiz says, what's the cost for, for these? Uh, I think this is like 60, 70 bucks, this little one. This is $20. Uh, this, it depends on where you find it. The little guys, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, these are actually getting kind of expensive. I think they're out of production. You might have to pay some good money to get a copy of these. These things are really cheap. These riot batons, I've seen these for $15, $20 at places. Old Hickory, as Tim would say. Uh, same with this thing. And I want to say this uh, extendable riot baton is like $175 or something. They're not cheap. I'll put links for whatever I can find down below for you guys. So that is riot batons and some different types and different things you might not have thought about before. Till next week, you guys be safe. Take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of these other goofy videos that I've made. Or you could subscribe or maybe go over to Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks over here. All the links are, of course, down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.